Well, folks, this is the one that everyone's been waiting for, and by everyone, I mean Adam. Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use temp vars. We're going to talk about what temp vars is, or are, I guess, how to use them, and why they're useful. Now, this is going to be a developer level video. So what does that mean? We're going to be talking about VBA, Visual Basic. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And for you to get a good appreciation for what temp bars are and, and why they're useful, you should understand variables and how variables work so you can store information in the computer's memory. And you should understand a variable's scope and visibility. For example, temp bars can be used to replace global variables that are used anywhere throughout your entire database while it's open. So if you aren't familiar with any of these concepts, please go watch these other videos first. Temp bars is an advanced topic, so make sure you have a good understanding of variables and their scope. And these are all free videos. You can find them on my YouTube channel and on my website. I'll put links down below you can click on. So what are temp vars? Well, temp vars is a collection that you can use to store information just like global variables. However, they've got some additional benefits over global variables and they've got some drawbacks. So we'll talk about that toward the end of the video. But essentially, you can use them pretty much anywhere. That's the major benefit of a temp vars. They can store almost every type of value, their variants. So you can use them to store numbers right you could put a number in there you could put text in there you could put a date in there you could put a boolean value in there okay and that's a benefit and it's also a drawback we'll talk about that later too now one of my moderators adam awesome guy great developer and he's the badge nerd on the website he has to have all the badges love that about him but there you go there's all his badges I said to Adam, I said, Adam, you've been bugging me for the longest time to make this temp virus video, so why don't you help me out? Put together what you'd like to see in the video. Here's what he said. He said, so first there's like this temp virus thing. It's really cool. You can like use it to store values and stuff, which is true. Pros would be that it's temp virus. And cons would be nothing because it's temp virus. Like record sets, we don't hate on them, bro. That about sums up the video. Smiley face. <laughs> and yes, Adam, you are correct. Temp fires are awesome. They do got some things you got to watch out for, but they're awesome. And in all seriousness, he did put together a nice long list of a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to talk about a lot of that in this video. So, Adam, thank you very much for your help. And I hope that uh, your patience will be rewarded. Okay, so let's talk about the skinny on the temp bars. Temp bars you can use just like this. You say temp bars, it's a collection. So you put in parentheses and then you put little quotes around it, right? Username, so we're creating a variable temp var, a temporary variable, right? Called username, and I'm setting an equal to Richard, a string. Now, they work in VBA code, obviously, and one of the major benefits is that they're not reset by errors. For example, if you have a global variable, okay, and you've got it assigned a value, and there's an unhandled error in your database, let's say just any, any old stupid syntax error or divide by zero error or whatever, any kind of error gets thrown, your global variables will reset, they'll be blanked. Whereas temp bars will survive that. So that's the, probably, in my opinion, the, the major benefit to that. Although my databases never throw errors, <clears throat> ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. But they will survive that. That's the, one of the major benefits. The next major benefit is you can use them directly in fields in your forms and reports. So for example, you just set that equal to the, um, the control source of a text box and poof, there you go. You'll get your temp file right there. And you can't do that with a global variable. You'd need to have some kind of a helper function. So you can make a function called get my value and send it the name of the value and it'll return it for you. But temp files, does that without having to have a helper function. And you could also do it with a hidden form field. This is what I used to do way back in the day before Tempfars, because Tempfars came about, I think, in 2007, Access 2007, I think, don't quote me. But uh, before that, I've been using since, you know, Access since 2.0, we used to have to have a form 
And when you opened up the database, you'd open up the form, you'd hide it, and then you'd save all your values on there if you didn't want to use global variables. And there's there's certainly benefits to that too, but now that tempfars is here, we can use tempfars. Now, when you do this, if you do set it as the control source in a text box in either a form or report, it's read only. You can't change it there. So you still have to change it with code, but at least you can use this to display it. This is handy for reports. You can display whatever your temp bar is on a report. Or if it's something like a username, like the user logged on, you can display that on a logon form. Now you can set a temp var based on a form field's value, but you have to use the dot value property. Okay, so if you've got a text field on your form called username text or first name or whatever, you have to say temp var's username equals field name dot value. Otherwise, it's going to try to store the object itself in the temp var, and you can't do that. Temp vars can only store primitive data types, right? Simple things can't store objects, can't store you know weird stuff, <laughs> just like strings, dates, you know, simple data types. All right, so if you're trying to get it from the value on a form or report, you have to use dot value. Here's something else you can't do with global variables. You can use temp vars in form and report properties, like for example, the default value property. You could say equals temp vars username. So you could set up a bunch of defaults throughout your database, and instead of having to look those up out of a table, right, you can just put them in a, you know, in your startup code somewhere and say it equals temp vars username, and that can be used as a default value. All right, you can use them in other properties as well, like the caption property. Here's another major benefit. You can use temp vars in queries as query criteria, okay? You gotta change the way that you call them though. You can't call them with this old style with the with the the parentheses in that. You have to use the the bang operator. All right, it's a little bit different. Okay, but if you do that, you can then use temp vars in queries. And again, with global variables, you need a helper function. Here, you don't. You just got to know how to call them. You can use temp vars in macros. I know a lot of you don't use macros anymore. I use them very sparingly, but they work in macros too. You can use the set temp var macro command to set a temp var. And then to get the value, again, you just say equals temp vars bang username. So whatever the, the, the name of the temp var is. And if you want to remove them, there's remove commands as well. Okay. And again, can't do this with global variables. You need a helper function. Now, the classic temp vars example is to store the logged on username. All right. You get it from the system environment or however else you're doing it with a logon password. And then you look it up in the table, make sure it's valid. And then you can set temp vars username equal to username dot value, right? Dot value. Remember, you're getting it off of a form. You have to use dot value. Very important. I forget to do that a lot when I use temp vars. And then I get my error message. It says you can't do it. And then I go back. Oh, yeah. Duh. Got to use dot value. And in fact, I go through this example specifically in this video, my user level security video. All right, here it is. If you want to see a good example with a walkthrough of how to do that, then go watch this video. Now, Tempfars does have some of it, some issues of its own. Not to, we don't hate on them, bro, but there are some things. Um, they can store any type of data. It's a pro, but it's also a con because you could store a value in a Tempfar like, you know, 65, and you think it's a number, but it's actually being stored as text because you didn't control how it was saved there. So make sure that when you use it, wherever you end up using it, if you're going to add to it or do something to it, you have to use the correct type conversion function. And that was, in fact, yesterday's video was on type conversion functions. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So if you're expecting a currency value, you might have to say convert to currency, temp var, whatever. If you're expecting a date, you have to say C date, whatever your temp var is. So just keep that in mind. OK, it's a variant. It can be anything. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Another thing, they don't need to be declared. They're not variables. The compiler doesn't recognize them, right? You could just willy nilly in your code say stuff like that, right? Temp bar ship name equals enterprise. So since they're not, it's not compiled and the compiler doesn't know what it's about, uh, you can, they're very prone to typos, okay? You can accidentally, you know, I copy and paste them anytime I use a temp bar. I copy paste the name because I always, I, the number one thing when people say their code isn't working, when I get emails or I see it in the forums, spelling errors, okay? And that's one of the reasons why we use option explicit, right, in our code, because option explicit, when the uh, when we do a debug compile, 
It'll catch any variables that are spelled wrong if they're not dimmed. It'll catch anything that's not a field name, but it won't check your temp bars. All right. Note to access team. Maybe do that. I don't know. Some way to declare a temp bar. I don't know. Um, and finally, no IntelliSense. So if you're typing, you know, with IntelliSense, you get like, you know, forms, customer form, first name. It'll pop up for you. There's, there's, there's none of that goodness for, for temp bars. Now, I just scratched the surface of temp bars. There's a lot to temp bars, obviously. And I'm going to be covering a lot more with them in the extended cut for the members. We're going to do some sample walkthroughs of some examples of how to use it. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. That'll be for the members, silver members and up. And I'm going to spend a lot more time with temp bars in my Access Developer Level 43 class. We're going to go over some additional sample use cases, the issues with data typing, removing them, listing them, checking to see if they exist, determining what type they are, lots more. So this will be my comprehensive temp bars guide in Access Developer 43. I do also want to make a special mention of a couple of great articles that I found online about temp bars. Here's one from Mike Wolf at No Longer Set from last year. Uh, he always puts these great pictures on top of his articles. He talks about some of the problems. Some of these I've already mentioned. He's got some additional ones. He talks about how to use a class module with temp bars, which is pretty cool. So check this out. I'll put a link to this down below. Also, Daniel Pino over at Developers Hut's got a great article on how to use temp bars and some additional things in here too you can check out. I'll put links to both of these articles down below in my links section. To learn more, don't forget to check out my extended cut. Remember, silver members and up on my channel get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's hundreds of them, folks. There's lots and lots of learning. And gold members get access to my sample downloads, my code vault, free classes, and lots more. But that is going to be your Tempvars extraordinaire tech help video for today. I hope you're happy, Adam. More to come. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so i do now have a quicker microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no i didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but i'll put a link to this down below as well 
Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.